Good evening, everybody. The Legal Aid Society of Palm Beach County is sponsoring a free webinar discussion on understanding the probate process today, July 9th, 2020. The featured speaker will be attorney at law, Emin Gunther of Donahue and Gunther. Ms. Gunther practices in the area of estate planning and probate and trust administration. She serves on the executive council of the real property probate and trust law section of the Florida Bar and is currently involved in legislative committee work in probate law and procedure. Join us for this very important and informative mm -hmm. webinar today. So thank you so much, Ms. Gunther, for joining us today on this webinar. Good afternoon. It is a pleasure to have the time to be with you here today to provide information on a topic that is near and dear to me, and that is probate. Near and dear to me because probate is an important milestone rite of passage, if you will, in people's lives. There's four or five important happenings in our lifetime that require planning and cause change. These are one, the day you're born, two, the day you get married, three, the day you have your first child or some sweat labor that becomes a part of your self-reflection, whatever that may be for you, four, divorce for some, not all, and death. Every one of these in, involves planning and causes change. We all plan for these important events, but generally most of us don't want to think about death. And so we put off planning for it. Takeaway from today is that death, believe it or not, is a time to shine. If you've done your planning and you have your affairs in order, you will leave a better legacy because your beneficiaries, your heirs will have a better probate experience. And if it's not a good experience, it can certainly be uh, a lasting, um, not good memory. With that, let's get started. Some terms that I'll be using today that I wanna um, set forth so that you're aware. When I use an example about how, title, how assets are titled, I will use the generic names of John Doe and Mary Fine. Decedent, I will use often, and that means the person who has died. Descendants which means the same thing as lineal descendants and issue. These terms are used interchangeably. And descendants means a person of any generation down the individual's bloodline or by way of legal adoption. There are some, there are some exceptions when it comes to ado adoption, but for the most part, if you're legally adopted, you're treated as a descendant down the line. And these folks involve, in, include children, grandchildren, and more remote generations down the line. So with that, let's get started. And what is probate? Probate is a, a court supervised process by which you identify and gather the assets of the decedent and you uh, pay for the probate proceeding in order to be able to transfer the assets to the beneficiaries. In order to do so, you have to pay the funeral expenses. You have to pay the outstanding debts of the decedent and then you can uh, administer the assets out to the beneficiaries. There are two types of probate, formal administration and summary administration. We're gonna focus today on formal administration, but I will touch on summary. And I will also touch on even a more abbreviated process than summary, which is a non-court supervised administration called disposition of personal property without administration. There's a very specific um, times when you can use this more abbreviated process and I will identify what those are uh, in the presentation. What are probate assets? Probate assets generally are those that are titled in the decedent's sole name. So a bank account um, that is solely titled you see on the statement John Doe. That's the decedent, that would be a probate asset or a, an, an asset or an account, for example, that's co-owned by the decedent and another person. So John Doe and Mary Fine, as co-owners or co-tenants, they each own 50%. If John Doe dies, his 50% has to go through probate. Examples of probate assets would be, uh, let's say, life insurance, an annuity contract, or an IRA in the decedent's sole name, that is not payable to a beneficiary by way of a beneficiary designation on the account or on the policy rather. 
an account like a, a bank account, investment account, which I'd mentioned earlier in the decedent's sole name, real estate that's in the decedent's sole name, or again, titled jointly with another person as tenants in common or co-tenants, which mean the same thing. Um, assets that are not probate. This would be life insurance, an annuity contract, or an IRA that is actually payable to a beneficiary. So there's a beneficiary that's been designated by way of a form that you fill out, and it's reflected on the uh, policy. A bank account that is held joint with right of survivorship, the decedent, and someone else. If it's joint with right of survivorship, those are the key terms, it would go 100% to the uh, surviving owner when one dies. Real estate that's owned by the decedent with another person, joint tenants with right of survivorship, those are the buzzwords that take it outside of probate, joint tenants with right of survivorship. And property owned by spouses, husband and wife, and the buzzword there is tenants by the entirety. And you would see these um, terms on the beneficiary designation or on the account or on the policy, and that's how you would know whether or not um, it qualifies as taking it outside of probate. Why is probate necessary? Probate is, is um, necessary in order to get the assets to the beneficiaries with legal title. So when um, a person dies and has assets in his or her sole name, you will not be a legal owner unless you are able to have it go through probate and either get a court order or have a personal representative who's appointed by the court distribute that asset to you after the debts of the decedent have been paid. If the decedent has no will, probate is necessary in order to pass the ownership by way of our uh, statutes, our Florida Law of Intestacy statutes, which provide who the heirs are. Otherwise, the will will control and the decedent can select who he or she wants um, his beneficiaries to be. What is a will? A will is a writing that is signed by two witnesses that fulfills Florida law. A decedent can name in the will, as I said earlier, beneficiaries of his or her choosing. The decedent can designate a personal representative. This is the person who's going to administer the probate estate, oversee uh, the provisions of the will, make sure that the provisions are followed and that the wishes of the decedent are fulfilled. The personal representative is that person that uh, presents him or herself to the court and to the judge and helps administer the process. Beneficiaries designated in the will control over the default heirs under Florida statute. And without a will, Florida law will determine who your heirs are. So although we most encourage, we attorneys definitely encourage everybody should have a will, if you do not, the law will take care of getting your assets to your heirs under Florida statute. They may not be the people you want to receive your assets, but they will get to these folks. What happens if there's no will? If there's no will, it is said that the person has died intestate. If the decedent dies intestate, his or her relatives, heirs under Florida laws of intestacy will take priority and the assets will go to these people. The, the following priority is what um, is stated under Florida law, under our intestacy laws. If, if the decedent is survived by a spouse, the spouse will receive 100% of the decedent's probate assets so long as they, there are uh, no living descendants. Otherwise, the surviving spouse will also receive 100% of the assets of the decedent if one or more living descendants that are also descendants of the spouse and the spouse has no other descendant. So if the surviving spouse has children and those children are also the children of the decedent, the spouse will get 100% of the probate assets, so long as the surviving spouse does not have children from another marriage. If there's a surviving spouse, and there are children from a different marriage, the surviving spouse will only receive 50% of the probate assets. And the living descendants of the decedent will receive the other 50%, assuming there's living descendants of the decedent. 
if there are one or more surviving descendants of the decedent, all of whom are also descendants of the surviving spouse, and the surviving spouse has one or more descendants, for example, children who are not children of the decedent, then that surviving spouse gets 50%, and the children who are the children of the decedent and the surviving spouse will get the other 50%, or just the children of the decedent, regardless of whether or not they're the children of the surviving spouse. Uh, if the decedent was not married, the probate estate will be divided as follows among the decedent's surviving descendants per stirpes, which means down the line. If the descendant has no living, if the, excuse me, if the decedent has no living descendants, then the decedent's surviving parents will receive the probate estate. If the decedent has no surviving parents, it will go to the brothers or sisters, ancestors. And thereafter, if there are no brothers and sisters, the laws of intestacy will pass the probate estate to even more remote descendants as identified under Florida law. Who's involved in the probate process? The circuit court in the county where the decedent was domiciled at the time of death is the court where generally the probate will take place. The custodian of the original will is required to deposit the will with the court within 10 days of death. In Florida, it's very important to have the original will. A copy can be admitted, but it is better always to have the original will. The circuit court judge, of course, is involved who presides over the probate proceedings. The personal representative and their his or her attorney is involved. And the creditors that may file claims will, will be involved in the probate. The IRS, of course, is also involved to the extent that the decedent owes income tax or uh, estate tax for income generated after the decedent's death, and sometimes federal estate tax or generation skipping tax matters as well, gift tax also. What is a personal representative? This is usually a person can be a bank or a trust company as well. And it's the, the person or the trust company that the judge appoints. The person's nominated if there's a will and then the judge appoints them to administer the decedent's probate estate. The personal representative must be 18 or older, have not been convicted of a felony, and have no mental or physical state that would prevent him or her from doing the job. The personal representative personal representative must be a Florida resident or if not a close relative of the decedent as outlined by Florida law. In a valid will, the name personal representative will serve if legally qualified. If there's no valid will, Florida law requires a priority for who gets to serve as the personal representative and that would be first and foremost the spouse, then the person selected by a majority of the descendant's heirs or otherwise appointed by the court. The duties of the personal representative are the following, to identify, marshal, gather, and safeguard the assets of the decedent, to publish notice to creditors in the local newspaper, identifying that there is a probate and where the creditors can file a claim, serving a notice of administration, which provides the interested parties with notice of certain deadlines in, in the case that they may want to contest the will or a trust and um, contest the jurisdiction or venue where the probate proceeding is taking place and to uh, also make certain elections that can be made under Florida law. The notice of administration gives the deadlines for these uh, when these things occur. Diligent, uh, another thing the personal representative has to do is a diligent search for what would be known creditors. And this is done by way of searching the decedent's uh, financial records, bank statements, files at home, to see who the decedent would owe money to that is reasonably ascertainable. Examples would be, um, obviously, utility bills, um, doctor's bills, hospital bills, um, anybody who serviced the home, perhaps uh, nurses or aides who took care of the decedent before he or she died. These are people to which the personal representative owes a duty to directly notice 
provide direct notice of, to creditors by way of certified mail um, and give them the opportunity to file a claim, give them notice of the timeline to do so. Then the personal representative has a duty to object to these claims if they're not reasonable or valid claims and to defend any lawsuits that are filed by the creditors to pursue the claim. The personal representative does have a duty to pay valid claims and these claims are, are paid from the assets of the probate estate. The personal representative does not have personal, um, doesn't have to personally come out of pocket to pay creditor claims. It's, it is to come out of the probate estate. File tax returns and pay the taxes that are due, of course, out of the probate estate. Employ professionals such as attorneys and accountants and advisors to do whatever needs to be done during this process and pay reasonable expenses of administering the probate estate. Finally, distribute the assets after all the liabilities have been taken care of and close the probate estate. Okay, what are the uh, estate's obligations to uh, creditors? We've talked a little bit about this already on the prior slide, but the personal representative must use diligent efforts to notify creditors of the probate proceeding, giving them generally three months to file claims. The PR personal representative or other interested party may file an objection. To pursue the claim, the creditor has to then file a lawsuit. Legitimate debts must be paid before distributions can be made to the beneficiaries. And the court does require the PR to file a report of the claims that have been filed and proof that they've been satisfied or disposed of. How is the IRS involved? The decedent's death ends the last year for purposes of filing a federal income tax return and it establishes a new entity, the estate, to which a new tax ID uh, is obtained or used for, for the estate. The decedent's social security number is no longer used. It's the new tax ID and attached to that tax ID is the reporting of any income that's generated on the assets from the date after the person died until the day you close the estate. Forms that could be required to file the by the, to be filed by the personal representative. These are the tax forms, right? The, ten, the final 1040 for the decedent, final uh, income tax return. Form 1041, which is the income tax return for the estate. That is the one I was mentioning has the new tax ID and um, follows the income generated after date of death on the decedent's assets. Form 709, which is a gift tax return. If the decedent made gifts during his or her lifetime and didn't file these returns, they can be filed after the person dies. And a Form 706, which is a U.S. estate tax return. The PR may be personally liable for uh, the decedent's taxes if not properly paid uh, from the probate assets. So if the personal representative distributes the assets to beneficiaries and fails to pay the IRS, then the personal representative does have personal liability to the IRS for having done that. What are the rights of the decedent's surviving family? The decedent's surviving spouse and the children are entitled to probate assets even if they are receiving nothing from the will. These are certain entitlements that are provided under Florida law and they can be waived by way of a prenup, prenuptial agreement or a postnuptial agreement. Examples of these entitlements under Florida law are a spouse and minor children have rights to the decedent's homestead. A spouse may have the right to come forward and claim the elective share, which under Florida law is 30% of the decedent's assets, which includes non-probate assets. A spouse and children may have the right to family allowance, so they receive funds before final distribution of the assets, and rights to exempt property, which will be paid to them rather than uh, to creditors or rather than to certain creditors. There's a certain order of priority. Um, and the family allowance is $18,000, up to $18,000. If decedent had um, 
married or had children after the last will was executed, and if the decedent neglected to uh, thereafter include the spouse or the children, these omitted family members are entitled to a share of the probate estate. And a Florida resident does have the right to entirely disinherit anyone. They do not have to leave them a dollar or anything at all. They can simply disinherit them. How long does probate take? Well, a simple probate could take five to six months, generally. If no federal estate tax return is required, a probate usually will take about a year after the court issues the letters of administration appointing the personal representative. If the estate is required to file an estate tax return, federal estate tax return, the return is initially is due nine months after the decedent's death. They can elect for a six month extension. In that case, the final accounting and the documents needed to close the estate are due 12 months from the day the estate tax return was due, including the extension time. How are the PR's compensation and the per compensation of the personal um, representative determined? All the professionals who service the estate are entitled to get paid. They are one of the priority uh, creditors to get paid. The compensation for the PR is determined one of five ways. It's determined by what's set forth in the will, if it is specified. Otherwise, as set forth in a contract, perhaps between the personal representative and the other interested parties, uh, the amount calculated under Florida law, or it, the fee can be calculated under Florida law, under statute, if the amount is, is, so long as the amount is not objected to, if the amount is objected to, it would be determined by the judge. And the compensation for the attorney who represents the personal representative is determined in similar ways by an agreement between the attorney and the personal representative and those who bear the impact of the fee, which would be the interested parties. Uh, the amount calculated under Florida law, again, so long as there's no objection, and if there is an objection, it would be uh, determined or finalized by a judge. What alternatives to formal administration are available? One is summary administration. In order to engage in a summary administration, which is a, an abbreviated process, the value of the estate has to not be more than 75,000 and the decedent's debts have to be paid or no creditors um, come forward and object. Those who receive the assets though during this abbreviated process, maybe within two or three months, they are still liable for claims against the decedent for up to two years after the date of death. And in a summary, you can go through the process of notice to creditors if you wanna make sure to foreclose out the creditors. And in that case, you could be um, in, in the time frame of four months in order to complete the summary administration. And that would, that would shorten that two, otherwise two year period for which the beneficiaries would still be liable to creditors. Disposition without administration. This you can do only if the probate consists of personal property exempt from claims, which are identified in, under Florida statute and under the Florida Constitution. And the value, and as the value of the non-exempt personal property does not exceed the funeral expenses and the medical expenses of the last 60 days. What if there is a revocable trust? So people often always ask the question, how do I avoid probate? And if I have a trust, am I gonna avoid probate? And that's not the topic of today's discussion necessarily, but um, you know, I think that's why this slide is here. Even, even in a probate, um, the interested parties are gonna get notice of the trust if there is a revocable trust. And the revocable trust is gonna be responsible for any of the debts and expenses of the administration to the extent that there aren't sufficient assets in the probate to cover those expenses, the trust is required to cover the reasonable um, and um, valid debts of the decedent. And all, if, if there is little to no probate, 
the uh, tasks the tasks of the trustee for the revocable trust now terminating trust um, it are very similar to what the personal representative has to do which is what we've discussed today which is marshal the assets of the decedent uh, pay uh, notify creditors uh, pay valid debts pay taxes file the tax returns uh, advise the interested parties of the provisions of the trust and then distribute the assets to the beneficiaries according to the terms of the trust once the debts and obligations of the decedent have been taken care of and that does conclude our my presentation our time uh, together I, I hope that uh, you got some good takeaways and remember that death is a time to shine and planning is required um, I do love inspirational quotes so I leave you with one from Abraham Lincoln in the end it's not about the years in your life that count it's the life in your years and I know we have some time for questions and I'm happy to take any questions Thank you, Ms. Gunther. That, that uh, was a very important and informative webinar. So we'll open it up now to anyone who'd like to put in the chat box any questions for Ms. Gunther we can, we can ask her at this time. Uh, here's, here's one question, Ms. Gunther. The question is, how can we obtain a copy of these materials? And will, we will be able to provide a copy of this webinar through Legal Aid Society of Palm Beach County. So anyone who has has registered and has their email on the file, we'll be able to distribute that the uh, the information to you. So um, so thank you for registering, and, and we'll have that uh, webinar sent out to those that are interested. Here's another question, uh, Ms. Ms. Gunther. Sure. How do you remove the loved one's name from the deed? So again, the question is, how do you remove the loved one's name from the deed? So in order, if, if you have real estate um, of the decedent, and the, re and the real estate was titled in the decedent's sole name or uh, co-tenants with somebody else, the decedent's share is going to have to go through probate, assuming it's not homestead. Homestead is a little bit of a different issue. Um, and it will be uh, real estate in terms of the deed. It can only be done uh, by a personal representative who has the power to change the title on the deed or a court order. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Here's another question that we has just come in. What is the approximate cost of a probate action? That could vary, um, but generally, if uh, we're talking about uh, a probate that is kind of along the lines of what we've discussed today, and there's, um, you know, no uh, real issues with creditors that result in ongoing disputes and or litigation or acrimonious um, you know situation with other uh, beneficiaries you know it's it's hard to say but it it could run anywhere from you know on a small estate three thousand dollars to you know ten thousand to twenty thousand plus so it's it's just really hard to say thank you here's another question how do you pay creditor claims if there are no assets in the estate? That's a good question. If there are no assets in the estate, you, you, can't, you can't pay creditors. And so if, you've, if uh, you've done what you could to notify them and they've been able to file their claims and to the extent that there is some money and they are valid claims and reasonable, you have a duty as a personal representative to pay those claims. There, are, there is a statute that provides for the order who has which creditors have priority and you would pay the priority creditors first. And when you don't have enough to pay the next line of creditors, then whatever's left gets radically distributed among um, the remaining creditors. Thank you. Next question. Are you required to formally notice creditors in summary administration? You are not required to do so, but you can. You do have to uh, say under oath and the, all the parties that are interested need to sign a petition that says that there are no creditors and that all the debts have been paid. 
so to that extent, there is um, some duty there. I think we have a time, Ms. Ms. Gunther, for, for a, a few more questions. Would that be okay with you? Sure. Great, thank you. And here's a question that just came in, actually a, couple, a few more. Can you explain the process of notifying creditors in a summary proceeding? The process would be exactly the same. It's dictated by statute. It's the process that we talked about that is in uh, my slides and in the material. You need to publish a notice to creditors in the newspaper, in the local newspaper. Uh, you need to have uh, done a diligent search of the decedent's records and, um, you know, files, bank statements, et cetera, try to determine who might be known creditors and provide those uh, people or service providers with direct mailing of the notice to creditors by way of certified mail, ideally, um, and, and show the court if there are any claims filed that those claims have been satisfied or otherwise disposed of. Thank you. Are the estate laws similar from state to state? The laws are similar from state to state. Yes, I would say they are, but um, there are various nuances all the time that can make the process quite different from state to state. Thank you. If, if a decedent passes away in one state and owns property in another state, for example, they live in New York, but they own property here in Florida, does, does the will have to go through the probate in both New York and Florida? Yes. In order to, uh, if the main probate is in New York, we would have to do an ancillary probate here in Florida to administer the Florida uh, real estate and get it out to the beneficiaries or sold or whatever uh, needs to be done. And in order, uh, there are some abbreviated uh, options to, to that process if, if a number of years has passed um, from the decedent's death and if you can um, you know, you have to get exemplified copies. It's one of the criteria from the main probate in New York and file it here. Um, but yes, generally it's an ancillary probate in Florida for the example you gave. Great, thank you. If, if there are no spouse or children, can the only surviving sibling be entitled to the exempted homestead property? If there are no, if there is no spouse, and um, there are no minor children, and you're asking about homestead, if I heard correctly, the, um, there, there could, if there's a will, the um, decedent had a right then to distribute the homestead to whoever he or she wanted. If there's uh, no will, the homestead will go to the heirs pursuant to Florida law. Thank you. How do you change title to a motor vehicle that is held in the decedent's sole name? Does, does it have to go through probate or is there another option? It uh, generally does have to go through probate. It, um, it could vary from county to county in, in Florida if that's the only um, probate asset. There might be a way in some counties whereby you could get it done without the probate, but to my knowledge today, it would require probate. Thank you. And I think, Ms. Gunther, we, have, we just have time for perhaps uh, one or two more questions. Would that be okay with you? Yes. Thank you. How is the remaining balance on a mortgage satisfied if the property is bequeathed to an heir? Uh, so if there's a will, the will might say whether um, the mortgage is satisfied by the probate uh, assets or whether the mortgage um, is given to the uh, beneficiary along with the property, inures over to the beneficiary. Thank you very much. And one last question I, I see here in the chat box. Uh, thank you, Ms. Gunther, for, for answering all these questions to so everyone who's been here and um, participating. If your loved one lived in a nursing home in Maryland, but passed away in a rehabilitation or hospice in Virginia, what state do you have to use the probate, uh, probate for the will? Uh, well, generally it would be where, uh, it could be where the person died. 
It could also be where the, if, the, if the decedent, even if the decedent died in the nursing home, which was not their primary place of residence, um, and it was in a different state, if they had real estate in that uh, other state where they lived, you could conduct the probate there as well. Uh, so it, it, you could do either or, I, I would say. You would want to do you. it primarily. You would want to do the probate primarily where there are the most assets of the decedent. Very good. Thank you. Again, that was uh, Ms. Emin Gunther from Gunther and Donahue. And if you'd like to get in touch with her, here is the information from Emin W. Gunther Esquire, DG Law Bridging Generations LLP, and they're located at 2300, that's 2300 Northwest Corporate Boulevard, Suite 123, Boca Raton, Florida, 33431. And your office number here is 561-994-1549. So I encourage everyone who has been participating and would like to ask Ms. Gunther any additional questions to please contact Ms. Gunther. We appreciate you for joining our webinar today on the topic of understanding the probate process. Thank you so much, Ms. Gunther, for your time. We appreciate you, you for being here. And for all of those that are out there, thank you. Stay safe. Have a wonderful evening.